part 27 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss customizing the auto-generated create view. Please watch part 26 before proceeding with this video. If you recollect from part 25, this create view is auto-generated for us. Let's navigate to the create view. Notice that at the moment, we are using a text box control as the user interface element for Janda. It's ideal to have a drop-down list control. Let's see how to replace this text box control with a drop-down list control. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's get to this create view. This is the piece of code that's actually generating the text box control for Janda. Notice that at the moment we are using editor for HTML helper. To produce a drop-down list, I'm going to use another HTML helper called drop-down list. I'm going to replace this line of code with this code. Let's format this properly. Notice that at the moment this drop-down list HTML helper is accepting three input parameters. You know, the first parameter is the field for which we want to generate the drop-down list. In this case, it's gender. And a drop-down list is basically a collection of select list item objects. So the second parameter is that list. So here we are passing a list of select list item. Okay, so within this list, the first item is male. Notice that both the text and value properties of the select list item object are set to male. And the second uh, select list item is female. Again, both text and value are set to female. And then within this gender drop-down list, I want the first item as select gender. So that is being passed as the third parameter. And then the other change that I want to do is I want select department as the first item within the department drop-down list. So for department, you know, this is the piece of code that's actually generating the department drop-down list. And notice that at the moment we are passing string.empty and that's why the first item within this drop-down list is an empty string. Instead of that, I want select department. So I'm going to pass select department there. And then let's also change the font of this page to area. Let's use the div tag to do, do that. And I'm going to set the style attribute on this div tag. Let's set font family to area. OK, let's go ahead and run this with all these changes. Let's navigate to the create view. Notice that we have a drop-down list for gender and the first item is select gender. And then we also have the first item within the drop-down list as select department. OK, there is another problem with this view at the moment. At the moment on this view, none of these fields are required. So without even filling any data, if I click on this create button, look at what's going to happen. A row is inserted. And let's look at in the database. So if we execute this query, select star from TBL employee, notice that a record is just inserted. Name, gender, city, department ID, all of them are now. Now I want to make them required fields. Now how do we make them required fields? We can use the required attribute on the properties of the employee object. If you recollect from part 25, you know, Entity Framework has generated an employee entity based on this table TBL employee. So within this employee data model dot uh, designer dot cs file we have employee class and that has got you know the properties um, uh, id name gender city all the employee properties now we can use required attribute on these properties but this is not the right place to do because this is an auto generated file in the future, if for some reason, if this file is auto-generated again, all of our changes will be lost. That's why I'm going to add another employee class to this models folder. Let's add a class file with name employee.cs. And then I'm going to paste this code within that. This is again a straightforward code we discussed um, about you know, similar code in our previous session as well. So now this metadata type attribute is present in system.component model.data annotations namespace. 
Okay, so what are we doing here? Very straightforward. Uh, look at that within this employee uh, data model dot designer dot cs. The employee class is actually auto generated for us. So if you look at this employee class, this is auto generated, and notice that this is a partial class. Okay, so we are creating another you know partial class here. So these two classes together make that employee class. Okay, and this class is decorated with metadata type attribute, and then we are specifying, you know, this class is actually type of employee metadata. So here, this employee metadata class is going to contain all the metadata for the employee class. So now, notice that within this employee metadata, I have all the properties of the um, employee class: name, gender, city, and the department ID. Okay, and then all of them are decorated with required attribute. And then I'm using a display attribute here for department ID. I'm using display attribute and setting name to department. You know, why is that required? You'll understand that in a bit. Actually, let's get rid of this one right now. And with these changes, let's go ahead and run this and see if these uh, fields on that UI are actually made required. So let's navigate to create view and then click on create, notice that I get all these. The name field is required, gender field, city field. And then look at this, department ID field is required. Okay, now we know that behind the scenes, this drop down list contains both department ID and department value. But then since this is stored as department ID within the uh, employee table, you know, and that's what is the property within that employee class, by default, you know, the validation message is going to be the department ID field is required. Now, this doesn't make sense to the end user. You know, end user sees them as departments. So it would make more sense to actually have an error message stating the department field is required. Okay, and to achieve that, I'm using this display attribute right there, setting that to name. So with these changes, let's run this now. And then that should say, instead of, you know, uh, department ID, it will now use department. So create, look at that, the department field is required. And at the moment, not, notice that these error messages are using, you know, black color. Let's say, for example, uh, I want to format this color to red. Is that possible? Absolutely. And also, you know, maybe I want red asterisks here. And then the detail error message, you know, I want to display them in a validation summary control. Um, uh, that's possible as well. We'll discuss uh, all this in a later video session. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.